What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of Player Ratings as we drew nil-nil to Everton at Goodison Park in Conte's debut in the Premier League for Tottenham Hotspur. And there were some positive signs, but there's still uh, still no shots on target, though. So uh, you went away for a week and, and still didn't see a shot on target and you come back and we still didn't have a shot on target. So what's changed? Not strange. We won the conference. Thing. That's <laughs> changed. <laughs> exactly. We'll see. No, look. But in all seriousness, yeah, I'm seeing some positive stuff from Conte. I'm obviously, absolutely buzzing and delighted. He's our manager, so we're willing to give him all the time he needs. Um, it just wasn't a vintage first game. Yeah, and let's start off with Hugo Lloris, sixes all round from us. In my opinion, I mean, he was hardly tested throughout the 90 minutes. I remember one save he made from Ben Godfrey quite early on, uh, but the real talking point was that penalty uh, that was given by the referee, Kavanagh, and then overturned. I mean, in my opinion, on my opinion, I mean, he gets a palm to it, so I really don't think it's a penalty, and I think the ref made the right call at the end of the day. Yeah, I think VAR probably got it right. I think for me, it's one of those where... Um, I think the images, he gets a tiny fingertip to it, which forces it out wide. So I think, is it clear and obvious? Definitely not a penalty. I think it's borderline. So it's really, really tough. But I think if I was an Everton fan, I'd obviously be absolutely fuming. I think it's the right decision at the end of the day. But I think he got a bit lucky that he just got a hand to the ball. But fair enough, he got he did get there first. And um, he ended up getting it overturned. But other than that, yeah, wasn't tested too much. And all the goal kicks were played very short this time, as opposed to Nuno, um, where we, we everything was going long by Hugo. And in fact, he would look for quick counter-attacks with long kicks, wouldn't he? Mm. Under Nuno, we haven't seen too much of that under Conte just yet. So he bowls it to the nearest person, it seems like. Yeah, literally, that's how. But, but I think it's a dead, deliberate tactic to force space in behind. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out going forward. Yes, let's move on to Christian Romero. Sim gives him a seven. I gave him a six. Uh, I mean, I remember in the first half, he was making quite some important blocks. I remember one really important one from Damari Gray, uh, which was going to really test Lloris. Um, but apart from that, again, I felt like with Lloris, he was fairly untested by the Everton forward line. Uh, but a solid display from him and <laughs> another heated moment from him uh, going head to head with Richarlison yeah. as well, uh, which earned him that yellow card. But all in all, good display he's going to be missing a lot of games for suspension I feel Romero isn't he definitely lives on that edge between uh, going over the top and just being up for the game um, so I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I see I think he had a pretty good display along with the rest of the back three I think that was solid throughout I think Richarlison barely had a kick I think uh, he was very very aggressive um, a few times he was surging forward as well but didn't really uh, make an impact in the, in the attacking phase but for another good display by Romero and first Premier League clean sheet for him yeah <laughs> it's actually mad when you think about it first Premier League clean sheet when he made his debut for us against Chelsea uh, all that time ago well it's not that long ago but still quite a while not to keep a clean sheet uh, but let's move on to Eric Dyer. Sim gives him a 7 I gave him a 6 uh, solid afternoon from Eric Dyer. no mishaps which we love to see um, I thought he was very commanding at the back kept Richarlison at bay uh, massively um, but yeah I, like I said like I'm going to keep saying we, they hardly tested us at the back yeah, I just think they did test us because I think we defended well and that's why they weren't able to get any shots. I think Dyer making some very valuable clearances was um, pretty um, solid at holding the line as well. And I think uh, another player who was hold, keeping Rosales in very quiet and I think he played really well at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, let's move over to Ben Davis. Sevens all round from us and I thought it was a really good display. I thought he was the strongest um from the back three and I thought he kept to is it Anthony Gordon uh, really quiet as he was trying to run at him time and time again but Davis was having none of it uh, we, he found himself uh, driving forward a few times as well which we don't really seem to uh, to put together with Ben Davis but since Conte's come in the Vitesse game and now the Everton games he's found himself more in the opposition half than probably he has done in his whole bloody Spurs career but now nah, I think it was a good display from Ben Davis and that carries on from his good display against Vitesse and um, yeah I think he's going to be a, a key part to Conte's system. Yeah, I, th I, li I like the way he's playing in this left centre-back role. I, I gave him my man of the match. I thought he was covering expertly well the few times that the ball does go through to Richarlison and he will look in danger. There's Davis um, getting on the cover. And I thought as well, covering for regular on the left-hand side, looked very comfortable in the left-back position. And he and I think he is a lot more comfortable there um, in, in, in centre-back because... 
He's basically, you can play in that left back role without having the responsibility to get forward and support the attack, which he definitely struggles at. And also he can he can tuck in and become that um, other centre back with um, with Dian Romero and also have their height to help him out. And I think it definitely suits him. It definitely suits him. And I thought um, if you give him time and space to pass the ball, he can be a decent passer as well. So I think he could find a second wind under Conte in, the, in this role. And this will definitely help him out the most out of anyone. And I also feel like he's probably the most comfortable in the left centre back role than any other only anyone yeah, else that's definitely true that's so definitely until true. we sign someone I think he, that role's probably his for now mm. alright let's move on to Emerson Royale Sim gives him a 6 I gave him a 7 and I thought another good display from Emerson Royale and he really is growing into that role he was attacking that side uh, that space down the right hand side time and time again albeit his crossing um, wasn't top notch he did put a couple of good crosses in uh, but what I was quite impressed with is the space and the, the where he was finding himself on the pitch uh, he had that header, uh, which went over the bar, which he probably should have done better from. Uh, but again, another good shift from Emerson Roy out at right back or right wing back. Yeah, I thought defensively really solid, really um, compact. And I thought he was dominating the right hand side quite fairly well. Only thing is, I think in this new role, he's going to have to up his uh, output goals and assists or like um, chances created and things like that. And we didn't see too much of that, unfortunately, in this game. Uh, need to see a bit more of it. We need to see him getting even more positions. He's going to have to like literally be so consistent in that but he gets up really really well he gets in uh, he has bounds boundless amounts of energy on that right hand side and that's going to serve us well in the future i'm sure it will take a bit of adaption period and uh, he looks quite good in the early stages but i need to, just need to a bit more from him in the final third yeah uh let, let's move on to sergio regulon sim gives him a three i gave him a four um he got that early booking really um actually really early on in the game for bringing on bringing down andros townsend and i felt like at that point, you know, we thought maybe we would be seeing a two red cards in two games from Spurs, but I think he did well not to um, not to get that second booking. To be fair, after getting booked really early, he was bombing down that left hand side time and time again. But his passing was just really, really off and really let us down a number of times, especially in that first half. In the second half, I did feel like he improved. Um, and yeah, like I said, he was attacking that space down that left-hand side, but no real quality uh, with crosses into the box, um, albeit he had that one cross that um, hit Emerson where he should have done better from. And he should have done better when Harry Kane found him at the back post where um, he had a nailed on chance where he really should have scored. Yeah, I thought I had a bit of a stinker. Actually, he did have on. a stinker. I think he had a bit of a stink yesterday. I think, but literally, more often than not, when he got the ball, he was giving it away really sloppily. When he was giving, trying to he give, was mainly goes. in the first half. That I think in the second half as well. I think both halves. I, I really do. I think he was both. They were really, really sloppy. Yeah, I think he ended the um, the game with a passing rate of sixty five percent, which is really, really low at this level, especially in his position. He did go forward a couple of times, um, in which one good cross, Emerson, as you say, and he should have done better with the Kane chance. I think the penalty um that was if that would have been given it would have been a lot of it was been down to him he kept the two players on side and he didn't win the ball off Gordon which he should have won the ball cleanly um so he could have easily been at fault for a penalty giveaway as well um, and I think it says it all when he's been taken off after 70 minutes with Matt Doherty you think Conte wants to play Matt Doherty left wing back of course he <laughs> doesn't but I felt like he was given no choice by the, how badly Regulon was playing unfortunately um so I think that was the biggest uh test that was the biggest uh testament to how bad Badly he played the fact that we had to play Doherty on the left yeah I mean in terms of how bad yeah he, he did have a stinker in terms of his output and his passing and his crossing in the box but I do felt like he was getting in good positions a couple um, of times he did yeah he and was that's why he did good not positions. not a one <laughs> literally because it could have been a one it was that bad on the ball mm. Yeah, completely agree yeah. with that. I mean, that's the reason I just marked him up one, just because of the positions he was getting in. And, you know, on another day, uh, we could have won 1-0 and it would have been 1-0 Sergio Regulon. Um, if he keeps it on target again, he balloons over yeah, the bar, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, it was a terrible effort. It was a terrible effort. Um, but let's move on to pierre Emil Hoybier. Sixes all round from us. A really hard-working, docky display, as uh, as you would kind of expect from uh, Hoybier. And, you know, he was up against Alain and Fabian Delph and his work was really cut out for for him and he was tirelessly working um, in that middle of the park 
putting out fires and you know he had a bit more license to go forward as well um, and he was the one that was involved in the challenge with Mason Holgate that ended up with him getting sent off so it wasn't the best display from Hoybier but definitely hard working display yeah I think he worked really well with Skip to um, shield the back three as he always does and I think um, they're working really hard together his recoveries in the in the center of the park were pretty decent but I felt like at times his passing was just not up to it you know we're asked to do quick give and goes or quick passes forward or um, quick one touch moves and a lot of the times when the ball fell to Hoy would break down and he and they, well, he was passing wasn't specific enough wasn't precise enough and it was too loose either going out of play or wasn't making the man and um, he has to improve that if he's gonna if he's gonna be in this team because he needs to up that quality. Um, it's not gonna be enough just to be a hard working off the ball. He's gonna need to be a player who can receive the ball and play a precise pass um, into feet to an attacker. So he definitely needs to improve. <laughs> Yeah, but overall, um, I think he was um, pretty solid. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's de definitely the word you can um, use for him yesterday, as as well as our next player, Oliver Skip. Uh, sevens all round from us, and I thought he was the more impressive uh, of the two central midfield duos. Um, I felt like he literally tirelessly running so much throughout the game, putting out fires, uh, challenge after challenge. Um, he made that really, really important block to deny Gordon. And, you know, uh, just uh, towards the end, you know, he was the one actually trying to get the ball in the middle of the park and driving forward, mm -hmm. trying to, to, you know, put some impetus in the game, trying to, you know, uh, get us the winner and trying to create some chances for us. Obviously, with no avail because we never got that winner. But I was really impressed with Skip and I was really impressed how he took on that mantelpiece with those last 10, 20 minutes to go to try and get that winner. Yeah, and he nearly came off for him if Lacelso scores that were in a skip assist. But uh, I just think he's so calm and he's like it's so different to Hoybier. I feel like on the ball, like he has, he knows exactly what his surroundings are. He knows exactly where to move. He knows where if he needs to pass it back or if he's if he has the ability to turn and look forward. Um, I think he's a different kind of element uh, and so in terms of composure to. Um, other other options in that kind of role and I was very very impressed with um with Skip yet again uh, according to Ali Ali Gold he said um that uh, he said Conte's already been very impressed with mm. Skip and he does see him as a could be a vital player in the Tottenham system and I and I completely agree with that and I think Skip um is another again a player who was um in, in midfield, in terms of composure, just head and shoulders above the rest. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Lucas Mora. Four from Sim, five from me. Um, and it was a very frustrating day uh, from Lucas Mora, that, that, to say the least. I mean, he was getting on the ball a lot. He was trying uh, to make stuff happen with his little mazy runs and stuff, but there was just no end product at all on, on any of these runs. I mean, I think he had one shot that was blocked uh, that looked like it could have been going in. But apart from that, um, there was a real lack of quality from Lucas Mora, wasn't there? Yeah, definitely. And I think his touch was heavy a lot of the time, which was in tight spaces where usually he has a lot better touch. Dribbling into into places where they didn't seem he didn't seem to have anywhere to go. He wasn't able to, you know, to get any shots or any through balls off either. Um, I didn't see him create much. To, to be honest, it was a difficult day for him in the central area. It just seemed very congested, and he didn't seem to be um, having a good time of it. Um, it would, especially with his first touch, he was just completely off it. But he did work very hard. He was helping Emerson Royale very much so on the right hand side defensively, and uh, he did a great job for the team from that point of view. But offensively, um, didn't see enough of him. Mm. which moves us on to Harry Kane fives all round from us um, and I thought he had a really difficult time um, against that Everton back line I mean they were they were pretty much crowding him out every time he got the ball albeit he did um, create a few nice chances a few nice openings for his teammates but in terms of him having um, chances on goal and stuff like that I mean he barely had a sniff didn't he yeah a few and far between I don't remember too many shots he even had to be honest um, he had one shot that went over I think it was or just why that's about it yeah. Um, so yeah, it was another difficult day. The only reason I marked him one more than um, Lucas is just because he did uh, was able to create a few more openings, as you said. Especially the one for Regalon was a great ball across the face of goal, which Regalon really should have been put away, and Kane could end the day with an assist. But um, I think he was, there was a few moments where he was doing some really nice hold up plays, some really good flick ons into Son and Lucas into space, but. Him up against the uh, back of the um, Everton back line, he was struggling to dominate um, a few times and was getting um, crowded out and uh, need to see more of him in spaces and, and getting shots off uh, for my liking. Yeah. Um, let's move on to humans on the last of the starting 11. Sim gives him a four. I gave him a five. 
Um, and as well, he, he really couldn't do anything to impact the game yesterday, Sonny, unfortunately. Um, just a really, uh, really... I think he looked tired, to be fair. I really did think he looked tired. He was going at 100 miles an hour last Thursday night against Vitesse uh, to try and impress Conte, and that he definitely did. But yesterday at Goodison Park, I thought he was a bit lacklustre, didn't do much to impact the game. There was that one moment uh, where he took a terrible shot, screwing it wide, where he could have um, played it into the box, albeit he was offside. Oh, yeah, I think it was. He was, Sonny was offside at that time, but it just showed, uh, that moment just showed to me that Sonny was just a bit off it uh, yesterday. And I can't really remember remember too many times where you know he had a good cross a good shot or, or anything to impact the game really yeah I think again a bit similar to Lucas in the tight spaces um, he was was his touch wasn't really on point and he was um, he was giving away too many easy uh, loose touches and um, he was kind of playing we were kind of playing a lot of the time at like a 3-4-2-1 formation with Son and Lucas a bit um, central and deeper than Kane Kane a bit further forward and I think there might be some adjustment periods because they struggled a bit um, I feel like to really impact the game properly and to know how to uh, when they got on the ball what to do do they play the ball quickly do they look for a little dribble because when they went for a for a run it they kind of um, got ran into a bit of a bit of traffic kind of thing and um, they struggle without the space they usually enjoy having wide a bit wider but that's where Reglon and Emerson are occupying so they're going to have to find uh, their game where they um, are in central areas especially in the box and finding space because it's a different kind of game but I'm sure they're, they're good enough players they're, they're working out yeah uh, let's move on to the substitutes. Matt Doherty coming on for Regulon uh, with around 20 minutes to go. Sim gives him a five. I gave him a four. Um, look, he came off for Regulon because Regulon really did need to come off. He was having a really poor game. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the strength and depth to to bring on anyone uh, that's really going to impact the game because Matt Doherty really didn't. I mean, he was. it's not his position. He was playing on the opposite side to where he usually does play. Um, and he was getting on the ball quite a few times. But unfortunately, um, he couldn't really do much. There were times and spaces there for him to attack and for him to do something. But uh, just lack of quality, really. No, I, yeah, it wasn't even lack of quality. I felt like every time he got into a position, he could get across and he had to cut back on his right foot. And as soon as he does that, the chance is gone. Someone else comes in and has to get a tackle in and whatever I don't think he actually was woeful to be honest for, for what he for what it was I actually think uh, he came on and got you know as part of the defensive unit he wasn't a liability he was getting a few tackles in and being strong a few headers as well, uh, a yeah. few headers he was actually getting forward but he wasn't able to actually do anything in, the, in like or uh, like get like when he was on the ball he just wasn't able to do anything because I felt like he just felt uncomfortable on that left hand side in the forward positions but he was getting to those positions so I guess that's a positive, but um, yeah, wasn't wasn't too much to it. Yeah, and Giovanni Lo Celso as well came on with 20 minutes to go. I gave him a six, him gives him a five. Nearly grabbed us the winner, uh, really did with a lovely shot that hit the post. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, not really much, too much to note, really. Yeah, um, I actually felt it was pretty wasteful um, when he did. Have the, apart from that opportunity where he hit the post, which was the last one, obviously the corner, which was pretty woeful from him, which everyone keeps replaying. There are a few moments as well. That corner, oh my yeah, goodness. Corner. Carbon copy of Christian I can't, Although I am watching it again, I, I do kind of feel like it might have been more purposeful than people think. I think because I see that there's a guy who ran behind the defender. So I've, I do have a feeling he might have his been playing corners, it short. He seemed to do that every time with his corners. He's got like Ericksonitis. Yeah, he, they were, but I think if it... Uh, in general, it was a terrible attempt. Uh, he did hit the post with a great effort. If that goes in, it was a, would have been a wonderful winner. But there were also a couple of moments where he was eight, where he could have um, got the ball forward quickly or into a promising opportunity, and uh, he just gave it away cheaply or with a heavy touch. And um, these improve his cameo performances there, but. I uh, was unlucky with the shot, I guess. It was a very good effort. Mm. Antonio Conte, uh, sixes all round from us. Um, can't be too harsh because he's only been there for two games and literally probably um, the same amount of training sessions with the team as he's had as games. So um, I think with Antonio Conte, uh, there's definitely what we're seeing now. We're seeing a structure to the team. We're seeing a, a pure way of playing. We're seeing us play out from the back, which we haven't seen for a while. We're seeing the wing backs get really utilised, which we haven't seen for a while. Um, the only thing I would say is our attacking play isn't looking great. We haven't, we didn't have a shot on target yesterday but I'm not going to mark him too much down on that because you know you need to work on the structure of the team first you need to work on the solidity of the defense which he, you know he's doing really well at he's got Ben Davis Davis playing better than anyone's ever got him playing 
since Pochettino probably. Um, so I think signs are good. Signs are definitely good with Antonio Conte, but we're going to need to patience with it. Definitely. And um, I'm looking forward to what we can bring. I can already see um, an element to what, how the structure team is going to be. Look, it's been so such a short space of time. It's going it's, it's never going never to be perfect so quickly. So it's going to take a bit more time to uh, everyone get everyone on, on how how they want to play, what position exactly to be in, what to do in each situation. That's all going to take time and it will come um, with, with, with time. Um, but I'm already seeing little sprouts of things, little things already. And I'm looking forward to what it can definitely bring in the future of Conte. And already, you know, bringing Davis in, putting him left centre back and stuff like that. He's already finding solutions to different positions. And um, I thought Davis was one of our better plays for sure. So um, good stuff from Conte so far. And I'm looking forward to what in the future, what we can bring. Yeah. Yeah, and you're definitely seeing that kind of nucleus of an Antonio Conte side at Spurs, definitely. albeit um, very early on, uh, very early on in that kind of trajectory. But we're seeing the nucleus of an Antonio Conte team, and that's what we love to see. And hopefully it can keep growing and growing until we uh, bang into life into a real Antonio Conte exactly. side. So um, that is our player ratings. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of our ratings and let me know your ratings in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.